Hi guys, welcome to Tech Gear TV and it's Crux here again. So today I have something quite special to show you guys and it is the Tomotech Peerless Assassin 120 Black. So it's right here, I've already installed it, I actually benchmarked it as well. Um, so I have it um, compared towards the ID cooling, but we'll check out the results later. bit about the history of Thermorite. So Thermorite was in Malaysia for quite a while, quite some time ago, like uh, five or six years or more than that. But then eventually they, um, the distributor actually stopped their business, so Thermorite was not brought into Malaysia ever again. Uh, that is until recently, it was brought back into Malaysia again and now we have a bigger variety of products, cheaper prices and better performance. So this one uh, the PA120 Black it is 179 bucks, and it goes for 6 years of warranty. So 6 years, I'm pretty sure that can last you for a whole lifetime because most people upgrade their PCs in 3 years or less. So I want to show you a, a, a few features of the cooler itself. So it's got a cutout right here. So this cutout, yeah, it's, uh, it's available on both sides. So this is for you to avoid the RAM clearance issue and the IO heatsink issue. So it's slightly higher cut out so it doesn't block the IO shield, uh, IO heatsink or the RAM itself. So you can put whatever RAM you want and then it still wouldn't block it. It's quite high really. But having said that, with high RAMs, you cannot put fans here. You have to put it in the middle and at the back. So uh, there will be space here, um, no fans. So if you are someone who want an RGB fans at the front, uh, unfortunately that's not possible unless you use low profile RAM. Okay, all right. So uh, the competitor is something we're gonna compare to a very similar product. So this is the ID Cooling um, SE207 XT. It is a, a twin tower heatsink as well, and it's quite hefty. It's actually a little bit more heavier than the uh, PLS SSZ 120 Black here. Um, just let me quickly ch check. So according to the box, let me see, let me see, let me see that. Yeah, yeah, okay, I found it. So the fans, the fans, each of the fans is 135 grams. So two of that will be 270 grams. 270 grams, the heat sink itself is 750 grams. So that will add up to be less than 1.1 kilo. And the ID cooling is uh, 1.3 kilograms, including the fan. So quite a bit heavier, 200 grams heavier uh, to be exact. Um, we talked about the, 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 the design of the heat sink, the, 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 the shape of it, the weight of it compared to the competitor because it's really close in price range and the performance I would say is actually really close as well. Okay, so let's talk about my uh, test bench. So powering all these uh, is a Cooler Master uh, 1300 watt power supply, the B1300. And then underneath the heat sink, there's a AMD Ryzen 5 5600X. Okay. And then it's all mounted on this uh, ASUS ROG Strix B550 F Wi-Fi gaming motherboard. Okay, it's all really awesome stuff here, okay? So I chose this motherboard and this CPU because I think at this price range, uh, this will be more applicable for most of the views out there, okay? Okay, let's get into the results. Uh, it is very interesting um, because as you know, the ID cooling is 200 grams heavier than the uh, Thermorite, okay? So we also tested this against the um, stock heatsink, AMD heatsink, and the results are pretty obvious for the AMD heatsink. So with the AMD heatsink, we ran a lean pack test using the OCCT for around 10 to 20 minutes. It doesn't really matter because with heatsinks like this, they get saturated within three, four, five minutes, okay? So with the AMD, it reached the maximum of 88.4 Celsius. Okay, and then an idle of around 52.8 Celsius. And with the Thermorite PA120, I tested it in two configurations. One fan in the middle, single fan, and two fans, one in the middle and one at the back. I did the same thing for the ID cooling heat sink. Okay, so with one fan, I got a maximum of 73 degrees Celsius and a middle uh, minimum of 34.8. With two fans, I got 66.4 maximum and 35.9 minimum. Okay, on the other hand, we have the ID Cooling SE207XT. Um, one fan, it's got a maximum of 70.1 degrees Celsius and a minimum of 36.8 Celsius. 
and for the two fan configuration it got a 68 degrees celsius for maximum and 36.9 celsius for minimum okay i forgot to mention that for each of these heat sinks i used the uh, thermal paste that came with it so id cooling i used the uh, id cooling thermal paste right here this one um, so it says uh id tg25 okay and with the thermal right one i used the one that was given by thermal right just okay so it is the thermal right tf7 thermal paste so they're both using their own thermal paste so there's nothing really extra you have to buy so this is a result you get out of the box nothing you have to add on nothing you have to buy extra all right so the results are really close and you will think oh then it wouldn't really matter which one i buy right um but the thing is the price is different okay so this is 179 and that is 199 bucks so this is 20 ringgit uh more than this so i guess for the almost the same result um actually even one or two degrees even better than the id cooling and 20 ringgit cheaper i would say this is a no-brainer and it looks sleeker than the id cooling as well i can just put it right here so you guys can see it clearer clearer yeah so i mean i don't know about you but i would prefer the design of this one okay yeah so that's it for the day guys so stay tuned for the next um thermal right heating review because i have another one right here the id cooling assassin king 120 white so this is a single tower and it comes with an rgb fan um stay tuned guys we'll be back in a week or so so like subscribe and ring the bell for more future content and if you have any ideas on what future content we can make please leave it down in the comment below thanks guys see ya mm -hmm.